In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Listen, folks, I'm here to tell you our political system is broken. The two-party system is dead. They have become one and the same. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite, favorite host. Favorite host. This is all, always the killer, the one that, that just destroys that never-Trump argument. Hillary Clinton will fill the Supreme Court with liberals. She'll also appoint federal judges with a liberal bent to them. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you that uh, it's corporations and businesses that create jobs. Arrogant, sanctimonious, self-righteous, sabotaging Trump. Everybody's got to be covered. This is an unrepublican thing for me to say because a lot of times they say, no, no, the lower 25%, they can't afford. I am going to take care of everybody. I'm, I don't care if it costs me votes or not. Everybody's going to be taken care of much better than they're taking care of now. The government's going to pay for it, but we're going to save so much money on the other side. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I don't, oh, maybe that's what people I said. People realized is that the Bill Crystals of the world, the never Trump people, they were just never serious. They never had any kind of ground game. They never had an actual candidate they could pick. And in a surprising and disturbing move today, the Libertarian vice presidential candidate just agreed that rifles are weapons of mass destruction and people on the terror watch list should not be allowed to purchase guns. So in other words, the party of freedom is liberty for me, but not for thee. Compromise where you can. Where you can't, don't. Even if everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right. Even if the whole world is telling you to move. It is your duty to plant yourself like a tree. All right, folks, happy hump day. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and it is Wednesday, August 31st, 2016. If you're listening to us live on KLNRradio.com, welcome. If you're listening on one of the many affiliates, I um, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Of course, if you're listening to us live, then the speech that Donald Trump just gave about immigration concluded just a short time ago, and there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about with that today. But before we get into that, I have something I definitely want to talk about, and it's something I've been kind of dancing around and taking the taking the kid gloves approach to but I'm done with it I have some ranting and raving from someone that I used to actually admire quite a bit that I'm gonna play here in just a minute and then we're gonna talk about it because I'm done being nice I'm done being called out I don't care who's calling me out the simple fact of the matter is I know what I believe I know what I stand for and I know why I'm making the decisions that I make now if, like I've told everybody 
if you can look yourself in the mirror when no one's around and say Donald Trump is the person that I believe is going to fix this country and I believe what he's saying and I think what he's saying is truthful and honest, then that's great. So pull the lever. But what I'm not going to do is stand around and have everybody that I used to look up to calling us names and picking on us. Those of us, I say us because I'm part of a group that has been pretty adamant about the fact for quite some time that we're, we're not going to vote for Trump. And I have to tell you, even after his speech today, or his speeches today, actually, I, I still have not changed my mind. Now, we're going to go into those a little bit more at the on the second half of the show, talk about things that I thought he did right, talk about some things that I think are interesting that he left out both here and in Mexico, um, because it is a bit of a softening. Um, I also uh, will go into more detail about what I think he's actually up to with these... Uh, changes in stance that nobody's really calling him out on because you can't really do that because he's Donald and you know he, he's the only guy that's going to make America great again so you have to cut him some slack you have to realize that he's not always going to say things completely perfectly and he's going to he's going to say things and it's not always going to be the same way twice Rick but but you got to cut him a break no actually we don't and that's one of the things that I'm tired of because if there was any other politician that was double dealing and double talking the way this guy is he would have already been run out of town on a rail but because it's donald trump and because he has this star quality that everybody seems to be completely enamored with he gets do-overs retakes and <clears throat> passes out the wazoo all right so before we get into that i do have something i want to play here real quick um you'll notice the voice once it starts so sit back it runs for about three and a half i'm just gonna say it because it needs to be said. If in 96 days Trump loses this election, I am pointing the finger directly at people like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and John McCain and John Kasich and Ted Cruz if he won't endorse and any of the Jeb Bush and everybody else that made promises they're not keeping. And because I have watched and witnessed to the point of incredible frustration, I have watched these Republicans be more harsh towards Donald Trump than they've ever been in standing up to Barack Obama and his radical agenda that has doubled the national debt, that has resulted in a 51-year low in terms of home ownership in this country, the percentage of homes that are owned by Americans, that has led to the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s, and that has led to millions and millions and millions more Americans in poverty and on food stamps and out of the labor force. They did nothing. Nothing. All these phony votes to repeal and replace Obamacare show votes so they can go back and keep their power and get reelected. Sorry, you created Donald Trump, all of you, because of your ineffectiveness, because of your weakness, your spinelessness, your lack of vision, your inability to fight Obama, your fear of being blamed for a government shutdown. All right, so we're going to stop there for a minute, and we're going to kind of take this backwards, because I have to admit, some of what he says here is true. There are plenty of people that are to blame for the creation of the Trump phenomenon. There are plenty of people that are to blame for where we are today. But what he's not telling you is he's one of the people that belongs having that blame squarely on his shoulders because he can't and won't take credit for it. Now, he would have if he was up in the polls. But see, that's the problem. Hannity's starting to panic. And Hannity's starting to panic for all kinds of reasons because he staked everything on this candidacy. And I think it's for a few different reasons. But it's not going the way he'd hoped because he couldn't sway enough people. So now he's browbeating people. He's doing the very thing that he used to complain that Democrats would do. There used to be a time when folks like Sean Hannity would tell us that no one, no one, regardless of party affiliation, is owed our votes. Now Donald Trump is owed our vote simply because he's a Republican and, and because at this point he's the only way to stop Hillary. Sean he's the only way to stop Hillary because at this point you've done everything you could to put him in this position. You have left out important things that have happened. You've not talked about a lot of the things that he's talked about, which are complete and total changes in policy and position. You've 
actually spoon fed him ideas. I've watched it happen over and over again on your show on TV before I could before I couldn't stomach it anymore and pretty much stopped watching your show on TV. I do still occasionally listen to the radio show, but it's only because I, I am a radio. I, it, it's something I've never heard before, but but I hear my friend Dan say it all the time. Who's on with me on Fridays? He calls himself a radio file. I guess that's really a pretty good way to put it, because. Most of what started me down this path was the fact that I used to listen to folks like Sean Hannity, Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and pretty much anybody that I could find, even Jerry Doyle, God rest his soul, the guy that I best remember as Chief Michael Garibaldi on Babylon 5, actually had a talk show for quite some time that I was able to find, and I thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed pretty much anybody that had anything to say about talk radio Especially if it was political. Until now. There are people that I can barely turn on now. Sean Hannity has become one of them. Rush Limbaugh has become one of them. Now I have to give Rush a little bit more credit. He doesn't really have guests that often. And it's not like he's giving Trump all this airtime to come on and blab and yada 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 blah blah blah. But I still can't really stomach Rush very much anymore either. Because he's not doing what he said he was going to do when the show started. He always told us, they all always told us that no matter what, they were going to be truthful to us and they were going to adhere to their beliefs. Now, I heard Glenn Beck this morning say that he believes Sean Hannity is doing just that. So he doesn't understand why everybody's being so hard on Han- on Hannity because we had our time of our vitriol. We, we've had the point where we took our stand and we got lambasted and we got ridiculed and it's still happening for a lot of us. But now that Trump is down in the polls, the, 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 the anger is turning, and now folks like Sean Hannity are starting to face the ire, even from Republicans that used to support them. And he says he doesn't understand that because he knows Hannity is doing what he believes. I can't give Mr. Hannity the benefit of the doubt there, because I don't think he's doing what he believes. I think he was doing what he thought was the most beneficial. Now... You may have heard the show last night that I did with Defend Wall Street on Twitter, um, also uh, Bill, but he he made an interesting hypothesis, and it's one that I've kind of flirted with for a time because it's been interesting watching how all of this stuff unfolds, and we have uh, the former head of Fox News is now a part of the Donald Trump campaign. Hannity has been his biggest mouthpiece. Uh, we have... All of these little uh, bits and pieces behind the scenes, like the fact that one of the folks that is running Breitbart right now is now also affiliated with this campaign, Mr. Bannon. And then there's all these little stories leaking about how Donald Trump intends to start a news channel after the election. It's interesting how all these pieces keep coming together, and it's interesting how it just so happens that Hannity's contract with Fox is nearly up, and Hannity's been in all kinds of trouble with his syndication providers. He's actually already supposedly willingly given up a deal with Cumulus. Um, Now, depending on who you listen to, it was either willingly or he was run out of town. I'm not sure at this point because I, I used to side with Hannity with that because the one that was giving him the most grief about it was Michael Savage, who attempted to take over his time slot for a short time in Cumulus, and that seems to have not worked out very well because the last time I turned on Michael Savage, he wasn't on in Hannity's time slot anymore, but he is, he is still running. Now, I don't know if it was a mutual thing with Cumulus or if Hannity, if everything Hannity said was true about Cumulus was true and he walked, but at this point, the simple fact of the matter is a lot of the folks that one of our former hosts around these parts, Stacy Lennox, used to call Anger Inc., A lot of those hosts are in serious trouble. They're having difficulty finding sponsors. They're using more and more filler for advertising space. They have sponsors that pull out on a daily basis. And it's because there are a lot of people that have now started considering those shows toxic. And it's because of everything they've been saying and everything they've been doing. And what disturbs me about where we are with political talk radio and the ideologues in this country is we're not allowed to disagree anymore or we get attacked and look 
I wouldn't be going after Sean Hannity if he wasn't spending so much time, every single chance he got, saying that he was going to blame every single one of us who refuses to vote for Trump if Trump doesn't get the, the nomination to the White House. Look, folks, it's really simple. The only person that deserves any blame if Donald Trump doesn't get the White House is Donald Trump. But if we're going to start extending it out to folks that also deserve blame, it's not going to be those of us that are involved in the Never Trump movement because we have pretty much from day one told everyone within the Republican hierarchy that this is not going to be the man that we are going to be willing to vote for. So if you're going to continue to put him up, then you need to make a decision whether you want to leave conservatives behind who are not willing to vote for him or are you going to tell him at this point that he needs to run as an independent and try to put up a candidate that we can all deal with and see what happens. They weren't willing to let him run as an independent because they were convinced that he was going to bring ratings and money to the political debate stages that they hadn't seen in decades. Everyone was billing him as the next Ronald Reagan. Everyone was billing him as the next Ronald Reagan. I even heard Mark Levin before he came to his senses one night talking about uh, Donald Trump's tax plan and how it was the most Reagan-esque thing that he had seen or heard in several years. Listening to Mark Levin today, you would think that he had never said a single thing positive about Donald Trump. And that's not necessarily good either because, again, I, I, do, I, I don't have an issue with Donald Trump as a person. I do have an issue with Donald Trump in the fact that he has been running a Saturday Night Live caricature of a Republican candidate for almost this entire cycle. And everybody's been eating it up that supports him. I also have an issue with the fact that Donald Trump, in his caricature, has made the GOP everything that the Democratic Party used to say that we were, and that so many of us were fighting to disprove. In one fell swoop, he has basically rendered the, the party completely inept, incompetent, and untenable. And yet, here they stand telling everyone that he's going to be the one to win the nomination when everything tells us otherwise. Everything tells us otherwise. Regardless of how many people that he brought up on stage tonight. Remember though, folks, and we'll get to this a little bit more after the break because we're coming up on the break, but remember, remember, the thing with that is, folks, the thing you need to remember is he, he was talking how much crap in the DNC for them bringing up the family of a wounded soldier and turning it into a press circus. And yet he brings up all these families of people that had their loved ones taken by illegal immigrants. And I understand why he did what he did. And I'm not necessarily even condemning what he did. I'm just saying for someone who is always so vocal when everyone else does something that he doesn't like, for him to turn around and do the exact same thing with little to no thought of what it's going to look like is a little insane. All right, so we've got a little bit more that I want to play on this clip, and then we'll finish talking that out before we go to break. And then when we come back, we're going to take apart the two speeches today, um, what I liked, what I didn't like. Uh, and and I'm getting a little sick and tired of all of you. I mean, I honestly am just tempted to say I don't support any of you people ever. Well, I'm like, I'm, you know what, Paul Ryan wants to play this game. Well, I haven't made up my mind either. He's running against the guy in the primary. I haven't made up my mind who I'm going to support. Well, you know, we'll find out in a couple of days. I haven't made up my mind, this game that they're playing. And so Trump fires back because he's sick and tired of these idiots that, that can't. You know, we just had a Democratic convention where you had the single most leftist socialist platform ever written in American history. I don't hear a peep out of any of these people about it. And you know why you're not hearing a peep out of anybody about it, Sean? Because we had the same talking points on our stage, so we don't have any room to talk about it anymore because we allowed a leftist to start running the party. And by we, I mean you, because I didn't support him but for maybe, f I mean, politically speaking, probably five minutes. When he first came on the stage, it was refreshing. I liked the fact that he was giving everybody grief. I liked watching him take uh, Jeb off at the knees because everybody knew we didn't need another Bush or another Clinton. 
now, unfortunately, thanks damn it, looks like that's exactly what we're going to get, which is another Clinton. So, Sean, yeah, nobody can really talk about what the talking points were at the DNC because the RNC has no room to talk about them anymore because they used the same talking point. Gender pay gap. Daycare. All of these things that everybody has always been talking about on the left that we've all been like, you know, this is really not something the government needs to concern itself with. They were active planks in the RNC speeches. So, yeah, Sean, that's why nobody's talking about it. But, hey, let, let's keep listening. You had a socialist that now defines and captured the hearts of the Democratic Party. You don't hear a peep out of these people. That's because we have a socialist running for president on our side, Sean. Anybody remember that he wants to make the government pay for health care? Anybody remember what that's called? It's called what kind of medicine again? I think they call that socialized medicine. So, yeah, you know, he's supposed to rep repeal and replace Obamacare, but he didn't bother to tell anybody when he started ranting about that that he was going to make it even more socialized medicine because he thinks that's going to actually save the government money and save us money. So, yeah, we can't really talk about the socialist, in otherwise known as Mr. Bernie Sanders, who almost took over the party because we have one running ours, or my former party. You have a president... That was reckless, not only with the economy, as I just mentioned, and doubling the national debt and accumulating more debt than every other president be before him combined. He sold, he literally gave money to the number one state sponsor of, uh, of terror, Iran, to get hostages back. All right, so all of this is true. Everything he just said there is true. Obama has done all of those things. The Obama administration has done all of those things. But thanks to the fact that one Mr. Sean Hannity continued to push Trump, even when all of us, all of us, and I mean by all of us, what, that he's at, what, 77% in likely Republican voters, which means even 30 some odd percent, what, 33% of Republicans were like, no, we can't do this. Even Romney was at like 90% of likely Republican voters by now, and he still managed to lose. Romney was pulling, what, 34% of Hispanic voters. Trump has like five. Uh, Romney was pulling 15, 18% uh, African-American voters. And I'm pulling these numbers off the top of my head, so they may be a little off. Um, Trump is currently sitting at six. And yet these people are convinced that he's going to be the one to win. He's not. But everything he just said is true. The problem is, Sean, thanks to you and those of you that have made it Trump or bust, we're going to bust. And we're going to get Obama 3.0 out of Hillary Clinton because she's going to take everything that he did, put it on steroids, and make it happen even faster. Trump is going to be Obama 2.0, so there's not too much of a difference there. But the scary thing about both of them is they both understand the power that Obama's been trying to wield that he didn't understand until halfway through his second term when he started doing everything through executive order. And rest assured, folks, mark my words, either Mark Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, whichever of these two nozzles gets into the White House, is going to make, they're going to make the executive orders that Obama did look like child's play. Because they understand how the power works that he didn't. And thanks to Kleenex kings like this guy, we're stuck deciding whether we can put our principles aside one last time and vote for somebody like Trump. I can't do it anymore. Not for this. Not for this guy. I have held my nose for about three cycles trying to put a Republican in office because I thought that was the right thing to do. Not this time. Not anymore. I've went this far. I'm not going any further. And by God, it's time we make some honest changes. And I thought the Libertarian Party might have been the way to do that. But now I'm seeing the more I get involved in that party and the more pe people I talk with in that party, all they're really wanting to try to do is rearrange the seats at the table of power. They're not looking to actually make changes. If they were, their candidates wouldn't be talking so many points from the left. They're not wanting to make the country better. They're just wanting to make their party more tenable so they can have a chance at the reins for once. I actually want to fix things. 
Why is that so hard to understand? And he's given these idiots $150 million of, of money so they can, according to reports last week, now they've cut in half the time they can build nuclear weapons. Where were you after American treasure, blood, sweat, tears, the financial burden of winning Iraq? And you allowed these people to demagogue the war in Iraq, and that created an opening for ISIS. I don't hear you critical of Hillary. Where was I when all that was going on, Sean? Sitting right here and writing for papers and writing for, for other blogs and writing on Facebook and interviewing people and trying to make people understand that conservatism was the way to make this country work, the way to keep it functioning, the way to bring it back from the brink, and you sold it out. So don't you ask me where I was. Don't you ask me what I was doing because there are plenty of people just like me that have been here fighting every single day just to watch you flush us down the toilet like we didn't matter just so your buddy Donald Trump can have a chance at the White House. Just in the hopes, just in the, in the, in the general hopes that maybe, just maybe, you get the nod as White House press secretary. But don't, don't get me wrong. I know you've hedged your bets because I know what's going to happen when he loses because he is going to lose because he doesn't even want the job probably never has you're gonna take a job at the new tv station sean we're not stupid so please get off your self-righteous high horse for once and go back to doing the american doing for the american people what you said you were going to do which is should talk to them about what the truth is it really is that simple all right, folks, so at this point, we've got to take a break. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We've already hit the bottom of the hour. When I come back, we're going to talk the speech in Mexico and the speech earlier tonight. Uh, what was good, what was bad, what he's changed, what nobody's talking about, and pretty much everything in between. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Things are going to get real interesting. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may May allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. All right, folks, we are back. We are live already into the second half of the show. My, oh, my, where does the time go? All right, so as promised, last half of the show, we're going to be talking the speeches both in Mexico and at home today and some very important things that nobody's really talking about. So before we get into that, it's interesting that today of all days was the day that Donald Trump chose to go to Mexico because this was also also the day that something that Jen and I touched on last night really hit the mainstream, which was, well, as much as it will hit the mainstream anyway, uh, was the uh, new revelations about Hillary's emails when it, uh, in reference to Benghazi. The simple fact of the matter is, I think this was again another distraction by Trump, whether on purpose or not, who knows. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is we now know that there were references to Benghazi and about Benghazi on an unsecured server, and I'd bet you dollars to uh, Chris Christie's Krispy Kremes that that's probably how the attackers knew when and where to strike, but that's just a feeling in my gut. So we'll wait and see if history uh, uh, shows me to be true on that one or not, because at some point we will know the answers. But it's interesting that that happened today and became really prevalent today while everybody else has been talking about Donald Trump's trip to Mexico. Something that I thought was really striking today about the trip to Mexico, because he does it pretty much everywhere else, So the president of Mexico comes out, got a little podium, a couple of cute little Mexican flags. Donald Trump comes out, same little podium, no American flags. Thought that was kind of interesting since there are American flags everywhere that he goes here. Maybe they wouldn't let him put any up or he just didn't think it was a good idea. I don't know. Uh, Something else that I thought was interesting because, you know, here, well, at least up until tonight, the wall was going to be paid for and built by Mexico. Never once did he build, did he mention that while he was in Mexico. Actually, he barely mentioned the wall at all. And then, of course, at the end of it, he made his little, you know, thank you very much for the invitation, Mr. President. Know that if I become president of the White House, that I will consider you a friend, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. To which all of the Trump masses started weeping with joy because he sounded so presidential. Never mind the fact that the rest of the speech sounded like he'd taken like four dozen Ambien before he went down there. I don't know if he was trying to be the more kinder, gentler, subdued Trump, but I thought it was interesting that with as much crap as he talks about the Mexican people when he's in America, he didn't really say much of anything negative about them when he was down there. But again, he also didn't really mention to them that he had planned on making them pay for the wall. Um which I think is interesting. Um, those are the two main things that stood out with me with the speech in Mexico. I, I tried to listen to most of it, but it was kind of annoying because I, I am not super fluent in Spanish, but I probably would have been able to muddle through. But every copy I could find of the audio had this translator on it that sounded even more enthused than Trump was to be there. So it made it really hard to get all the way through the 30 some odd minute speech. But I did skip around, see some things, uh, just to make sure that I heard enough to be able to, to, to 
talk about it a little bit. Um, now, the speech tonight, however, I actually listened to in its entirety a couple of different times, only because this was all him. There was no translator. Sometimes there needed to be, as usual with Trump. Um, but I, I, all in all, I have to say it was not a terrible speech. I think he made some really good points. I think the nickname Amnesty Don will probably stick with him now for a while, though, because he didn't put those fears to bed. And let me tell you why he didn't put those fears to bed. Because if you'll notice, there was only a couple of times that he mentioned the 11 million. The first time was to say, you know, honestly, we don't know what that number truly is because we've been hearing that same number for years. By now, it could be 20 million. It could be 3 million. We're never really going to know until we start trying to do something about it. And then he started talking about all the sweeping changes that he was going to do to make sure that the criminals that had come across and were doing bad things were removed. And then he started talking about how he was still going to make sure that he was going to build the wall and it was going to be very cost effective for the American people. Nobody seemed to catch that last part. So I'm going to, I'm going to remind you. He said, we're going to find a way to build the wall and we're going to do it very economically. It's going to be very cost effective to the American people. Wasn't this the same guy that six months ago was saying that the American people didn't have to worry about the cost of the wall because he was going to make the Mexicans pay for it? And now all of a sudden it's going to be cost effective to the American people. Now, that that's just a little thing because, I mean, everybody with half a brain knew Mexico was not going to pay for the wall. So, you know, but the, the whole point is it's, again, another instance where he said something that turned out not to be true and nobody's talking about it. So I'm going to talk about it. Now, let's move forward to the next thing, because he said something towards the end of the speech before he brought all the moms and dads out of the folks that were that had family members or brothers and sisters that were killed by um, illegal immigrants that I thought was very telling. Because he said, the first thing we're going to do is get all the bad people out. We're going to get the wall put up. We're going to make sure that there's no more border crossings. We're going to make sure illegal immigration is a thing of the past. Then and only then will we start discussing what we're going to do with those that still remain. I'm confused because that sounds an awful lot like what everybody else was talking about sands the wall. So we're back to basically him pilfering ideas from pretty much the other seven to 16 people that were on the stage that he was lambasting and ridiculing and making fun of and saying, well, their policies won't work because they're not going to be as hard on immigration as I'm, as I'm going to be. And I'm going to make sure we get a wall. That's funny because John McCain told the people of Arizona that he was going to make sure they got a fence. That didn't even happen. So you're telling me you're going to build a two, what, 2,500 mile wall? We're going to have the great South Wall of America? That's what we're talking about here at this point? And you expect us to believe this is actually going to happen when you've waffled on every other position that you offer? That's right, folks. I'm going to borrow this from somebody. And honestly, I, I know if you're listening, you use this. I can't think of who you were and I can't find your information on Twitter. But it's Waffle Wednesday or Waffling Wednesday and he waffled again. You know, I mean, with Donald Trump, we got a few different things going on. We got Taco Bell Tuesday. Now we got Waffling Wednesday. And he did it again, and nobody's talking about it. They're talking about how great his speech sounded, how much more presidential he sounded, how he made all these really strong points, except he backpedaled on the two biggest ones that made his supposed proposals different than everybody else's. So now he's basically using the same talking points as Rubio and um, Jeb, and at this point, Cruz's immigration plan on paper is tougher than Donald's. And no, if you're listening for the first time, I am not a Cruz bot, never have been. I supported Cruz at the end because he was the last true conservative in the race. Whether anybody wants to admit it or not, Donald Trump is not a conservative. Donald Trump is someone who is looking out for Donald Trump, trying to make sure that he gets his shot at the White House because he's been trying to get here since, since the 1980s and hasn't managed to pull it off yet. He even went so far as to start trying to form his own political party, which, when he did it with the uh, Reform Party, was laughable. Now a lot of us are seriously looking at the alternatives of forming another party because the two-party system has left us in the cold and the libertarians are 
already, even with their brief flirtation with the spotlight, already starting to try to do the same thing. But the simple fact of the matter is, folks, this is where we are. This is where we are as a country. We now have people that used to say they were bastions of conservatism telling us that we have no choice, no choice at all, but to vote for the nominee, which has never been what they've said before. And the funny thing is, in 2012, I was exactly where the Trump supporters are now with Romney. And I didn't see yet just how broken things were. Because at least with Romney, there were things that I could look at that I could draw correlations with and I could draw parallels. And there were enough of those that at the end of the day, I really thought Romney was the better choice between Obama and or between himself and Obama. There aren't enough corollaries with Trump for me. There just aren't. He's not firm enough on his positions. He changes them all the time. He tells different people different things depending on who he's talking to, which is very indicative of a salesman, by the way. Don't get me wrong. This is just a habit of his. I don't necessarily think he's doing it on purpose, but since he's not been scripted and because he's not in front of a teleprompter, he's telling people what it is they need to hear to close the deal. The problem is it may not be intentional, but it's still dishonest because he knows he's working the room. And I've said this before, I knew that he was working a room the first time I read an off-the-cuff interview piece and he'd mentioned that anytime he felt like he was losing the crowd at a rally, all he had to do was mention the wall and they got jazzed right back up again. That's when I knew we had somebody that was doing nothing but working the room. And that's what he's been doing again. He's been going around telling people what they wanted to hear, what they needed to hear to get him to this point. Which, in essence, makes him a liar. The same thing that he was calling everyone else. You know, that that's his whole stick with Cruz. He was a liar. Look, I'll admit the Cruz campaign did some, some kind of shady things on the surface. But let's not forget, he's a fairly rookie politician too. Everybody's trying to make it out like he's this lifelong politician. First of all, he's not even that old. I think we're around the same age. Second of all, this was only his first term in the Senate. He was a freshman senator. So to go from se freshman senator to president and all of the different rules and the different things that he may not have been prepared for, look, I don't know whether he intentionally did some of these things or if it was just naivete. I don't know. Now we'll never know. But what I do know is Donald Trump has made a lot of the same misstabs and nobody's called him for them. I've seen donation request emails from Donald Trump. Not sure how I got them, but I got them. And they were using the very same thing that he was calling out Ted Cruz for using at the time when Ted Cruz was soliciting folks for uh, donations through email. And that's the thing, folks. That's the thing that I guess I really don't get. And it's one of the things that has been bugging me ever since a pretty heated Twitter exchange that I had with someone probably about seven to 10 days ago when I was talking about the fact that when it comes right down to it, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are friends. And because of that, I've always wondered whether or not this has been genuine. And everybody that I postulate that with reminds me of how hard he's been on her, supposedly, and how he's calling her crooked Hillary Clinton and telling everybody that she needs to be in jail, etc. You know the problem with that, folks? I heard Chris Christie say much of the same things about one Donald Trump when he was running for the presidential nomination. Donald Trump was crooked, wasn't good for New Jersey, did terrible things to Atlantic City, was an all-around probably not very nice person, not a very good person, but now you hear Chris Christie talk about how long they've been friends. These people all run in the same circles. These people all work together on a daily basis. They all talk to each other. Donald Trump has had the ear of everyone that was on that stage. That part was never not true. He's, they've, been in the, they've all been in his pocket. Whether we want to admit it or not. But is it really a good idea to give the puppet master control? I mean, we're talking about moving from the point of maybe having access 
to a couple of politicians here and there and seeming to not care which side of the aisle they're on to having full access, run and control of the White House. Then there is this scary bit about the possible Russian hacks for the DNC. Now, I don't know if Donald Trump was involved in those things, even in a tertiary role, but I do know that his campaign has had some rather weird overall connections to the Russians. He seems to be infatuated with Putin. And I do know that two very not pro papers recently, along with a couple of others not pro publications online, have been hacked recently, and it appears to have been done by Russian hackers. Simple fact of the matter, folks, is it looks like there could be some teeth to this problem with the Russians. And it could put a whole new spin on this if it happens to be true. Now, again, this is all still in the realm of, of theory for the moment. But when you take all of the different little things, all the different little backpedals, backsteps, changes in word choice, changes in stances, and you look at everything that's been said and everything that's been done, you just have to ask yourself, is this really the person that I need to be voting for? And look, folks, I'm going to tell you the same thing that I tell friends over the phone, friends in DM groups that I'm in, friends in conversation groups that I'm in elsewhere, and even in person. I have never in my life told anybody who they should vote for. I'm not going to start now. All I'm doing is bringing to you and bringing to your attention things that I have noticed so that you have the ability to draw your own conclusion as to whether or not this is who we should be voting for because I don't think either one of them deserve to be POTUS, to be quite frank. I really don't. I quite frankly do not think that either one of them deserve to be President of the United States. And I've said this before. Thanks to the short attention span and anger of the American people, we now have a choice between someone who should be a criminal and someone who is criminally insane. I'll let you figure out which one's which. Because at this point, neither one of them has technically done anything illegal, but they're both being investigated like mad. Um, both of them are nuts and potentially certifiable, so I guess it fits for both of them. But yet, that's where we are. But again, this was the one time, probably in our lifetime, that there were enough people that were mad about both choices that were put in front of them that we really could have done something with a third party. You still can, to be honest. Look, I would love to be able to write in Evan, McMull Evan McMullen. I really would. But the problem is my state doesn't even recognize write-ins. So I will likely still be voting for the Libertarian Party because it's still one way for me to keep my word. Look, I may not like the people that they're putting up right now, but it is still another option. And it, there is still a way for me to work within that party when I can to try to affect change. And I am also actively involved in a group that is seriously considering forming another party so that conservatism actually has a home again. Actual conservatism, not the weirdo kind and not the, the, the Trump alt-right racist kind. Actual conservatives that believe conservatism actually works. And I guess we're going to have to find a new word for that because it seems conservatism has been completely co-opted and it's, it's just it's not even that easy to say anymore. It's really not. I just, I don't, I don't have the answers, folks. I'm not trying to give you answers. I'm not trying to spoon feed you information. I'm simply trying to make you think. And the simple fact of the matter is when you look at the speeches and you look at the things that he left out of those speeches, you have to understand that he is legitimately softening on his immigration stance, which I don't necessarily have a problem with because I thought it was a very grandiose stance to begin with. Why I have a problem with it was because if he was saying the things now, if he was saying the things back then that he was saying now, I don't think he would be where he is right now. We would have had a completely different choice in front of us and anyone but him at this point could have beaten Hillary Clinton. 
because none of them have the baggage that he has. None of them have the unfavorability ratings that he had. And look, again, going back to some of the points that Sean Hannity was ranting about earlier, I do fully understand the fact that a lot of the folks in our government are also responsible for Donald Trump being the phenomenon that he is right now in politics. But that also has a lot to do with Anger, Inc., because people don't seem to understand how our system is actually designed to work. Our system is not designed to be quick. Our system was designed for what we used to laughingly call swift justice, not swift legislation. And swift justice isn't even necessarily that anymore. You can go months, even years, tied up in the legal system before you get any type of justice. But our our governing system is even slower. And it's that way by design. Because if it weren't, if it was able to be changed by populist wave and by whim, then the country would tear itself apart, much like you're seeing happen now. Because we have so many people that want the changes to happen and they want them to happen now and they need to need them to happen now because by God, they're angry and it doesn't work anymore. But our country does still work. What nobody understood when they can, when, when in 2010, they started giving control of the House and the Senate back to the Republican Party. That was a clear signal to the Republican Party to put on the brakes as much as they could. And that's what they did. But in 2012, when they didn't get Romney into office, all they could really do was keep putting on the brakes. It was a stalling tactic. Let's shut down as much of it as we can, keep as much of his information and legislation from going through as we can, and it was working. It was working so bad that the President of the United States usurped them and the Constitution and passed immigration reform, not by law, but with a pen and a phone. So much so that even Saturday Night Live made fun of him. That's how much this was working. But we didn't give them the tools that they needed because we couldn't get behind Romney. So now because of Trump, we're likely going to lose even more seats. Conservatism is likely going to remain untenable for at least a cycle. But I I, I, I submit this to you today. If Trump wins and the, the the Republican Party becomes the bastion of the alt right that it is slowly becoming... The GOP will be untenable for generations, not for a cycle. And that's why I've opposed Donald Trump from almost the beginning. When I realized the type of people that he wasn't distancing himself from, that he wasn't disassociating with, when he started making all this noise about he had no idea who David Duke was, even though he knew point blank who David Duke was because years ago when they interviewed him about it, when he was starting the Reform Party and David Duke joined the Reform Party. Well, I'm not real happy about having a racist in my party. Funny, he knew who he was then. All right, folks. Well, believe it or not, we are officially out of time. I'm going to have to get out of here and make room for the Rhino Report coming up next on our home station right here on KLNRRadio.com. So stay tuned for that. If you're listening on one of the affiliates, whether it's AMFM247.com, SHR Media, Red Nation Rising Radio, the Liberty Channel, or any of the others, Make sure to check your local local listings to find out who's coming up next. I will be live with you again tomorrow night for a double shot. First, Jen and Rick, then America off the rails. And then we're going to bring it home Friday night with the last round of the Trumpkin call out. So if you're listening to this show on a lot of the other stations, because I know most of them are actually pretty popular with you Trump folks. Look, we're not going to call you names. We're not going to try to make fun of you. We want you to actually call in. I'll give out the number tomorrow. I'm not going to do it right now. But I will give out the number tomorrow. We'll start tweeting it out tomorrow as well to make sure that it's been given out for at least 24 hours. And we want to talk to you. Not to, not to point and laugh. Now, now, we may, depending on what you say. But we want your honest answers as to why, even with all the waffling and the position, position changes, you still think Trump is the way to go. But I have got to make room for the folks coming on behind me. So you guys have a great night. This is Rick Robinson. This, this has been America Off the Rails. And I'll be back with you before you know it. Have a good night. Take care. God bless.
don't, 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 don't. Hey, you guys, I'm going home. Later. Game over, man. It's game over.